Hey, I'm Bailey from Bones and Jones, and you're watching The Music Enthusiast. Hi, I'm Marissa. I am from The Music Enthusiast blog, and hello from sunny Miami. That's where I'm currently based, um, aka where I live. And this, it's exciting, exciting. So I, I guess we just kind of jump right in. So you guys are in Austin right now. Yeah. And for South by Southwest, which is super, super amazing. It's super, super cool. Are there any other festivals that you kind of see yourself playing? Because I feel like I see like a vision of like Coachella at Golden Hour. There's like this dreamy vibe or like even ACL, which is very similar, I'm sure, to uh, South by Southwest. But just there's something so like warm and um, inviting and calming about your music and also pairing it with um, kind of a sunset golden hour type of vibe that I just it would be perfect so any festivals that are on the bucket list oh well straight off the bat Coachella yeah like you said definitely definitely the big one um, like I was kind of saying before your songs remind me of something out of like a coming of age movie there's something about I could so see them kind of almost like towards either like when there's like a montage of like not really a lot of dialogue like things happening either towards the middle or towards the end of a movie that's kind of like what i see is there any movie that you would wish that your music would appear on oh my god that's a good question anything by greta gerwig maybe would be very cool okay. really loving i like it i like Gerwig's it and francis francis Hart. that's a regular one and like like Lady Bird, something like that very coming of age yeah of I feel course. Like that, yeah that that'd be a good a good pairing <laughs> If she ever is. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so congrats on playing South by Southwest. It was such a, it's a, such Thank a you. huge, uh, you know, moment in your career. Is there any artists that you would like actually like to see that you're like, oh, we're also, you know, we're playing the same festival as them or they're on the bill or and anybody that's just kind of there? Is there anyone that you want to see that's there? Big one is Black Keys. They're doing, um, doing a show while they're up here. Uh, we've been fans of them. They're pretty much the reason we started as a band. We used to love... Um, their, I think it was their Junior Kimbra cover album. Um, and that really just got us under the like, music as, a, as friends. And then we started the band sort of after that. But yeah, haven't seen them before. So definitely going to see them. And I think Shannon and the Clams opening for them, which would be very cool. And then a couple of our friends' bands, um, groups are coming over from Australia, Folk Beach Trio and the Bella Lip Bombs. So we're definitely going to support them and hang out with them. Awesome. Is this the first your first time playing in the States? Like playing music in the States? Yeah. First time. I think for yeah, for all of us it's our first time in America in general. In general. Wow. Super, super yeah. cool. Love that. Love yeah, that. Welcome, yeah. welcome. Um, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite the quite the place. It's super, super diverse everywhere. It's super, super different, but it's yeah. a vibe. Mm. Yeah, it's very cool. Very cool. Really enjoying it so far. What is your favorite thing about being a musician? Something that you really, really love about being a musician? For me, it would probably be on a personal level. I guess it's a form of, I was talking to someone about this the other day. Someone was asking me if I journal. I don't really journal at all. I'd love to do it, but I feel like I'm too, got too much ADHD to sit there and write. <laughs> so I think like playing a song and just writing, writing music, writing a song, is my form of, of journaling, I guess it's a great, um, great way to, yeah, let out whatever I'm feeling, and whatever I'm going through. A good way to sort of clear my head, get it out into a, yeah, the form of a song. We do have a very sort of, as a band, we have a very energetic live set, um, and it's just very fun. We're not taking it too seriously or anything. We just get up there and have a lot of fun, and we're all literally like brothers, best friends. So it's it's just so much fun being able to do this together. And, go up on stage and yeah, play together and laugh and like we, we played a really big show the other day um in australia and we were just like looking at each other like what the hell are we doing <laughs> just laughing about it and we're like this is this is fun <laughs> that's super awesome for some reason like you guys almost remind me of like uh five seconds of summer i've been a huge fan of them for a long time I know. Since yeah. I feel. I just like there's like a. You guys would get along with them so well, honestly. Yeah. So, yeah. Much, so much Aussie energy, so much laughs and happiness. I just I love it so much. Any funny moments so far? First thing that comes to my mind, uh, it was when we were sort of just starting off. I think it was only four of us playing at that point, or one of us was away or something. But we were playing and um, just to this, we were playing like no one. It was like five people in the crowd in a in a town in in Geelong where we're from, down sort of near Melbourne. I was standing in the middle playing my guitar and then. I looked over to the side and I couldn't see our, like one of our bass players. It's like, where's he gone? And then I sort of like looked over and he'd just fallen off the side of the stage completely. <laughs> and we all just like 
I, I don't know if we stopped playing, but we all just like, what the hell? That was really funny. And especially because it was to like no one. It was just even funnier. Would have been a great like, like peep show moment or something. Or like the in-betweeners. <laughs> that was a fun one. Fun one early on. But literally yesterday, we're all on the top of this mountain. Had a few beers on the top of this mountain after riding these horses. And then we were just like riding back down, looking at each other. Like, what the hell? This is like, we never thought we'd be doing this, like coming from Geelong, being here, we're all just like laughing about it. This is so stupid. <laughs> but yeah, it was great. But very funny to us. <laughs> of course, of course. If it wasn't for music, what else would you be doing with your life? Nothing at all. No, I don't know. <laughs> um, maybe I love, love film and TV. So I'd love to work in that one day. Um, even even if I'm still working in music, but um, either directing or I love, obviously love the soundtracks and um, everything that goes into making the score for a film. Next year, I'm going to be studying a Bachelor of Music, specializing or majoring in film and TV. So working on um, orchestration and stuff. So something like that would be, would be my ideal. That sounds super cool. Love it. <laughs> the EP came out last month. And were there any... Any other names that were like any contenders? Quite. It's it's all been um, from the start. One of the guys came up with this idea. Um, we're going to be releasing, I think, four, three EPs over the next year. And then, um, well, 2024. And then towards the tail end of the year, um, it's all going to compile into an album. And it's got a theme that runs through it. Um, it's going to be called, the final product is going to be called In Color. And then so it's in blue and the next one's in yellow or something or in red all in in the names of color so then it's going to be read as like bones and jones in yellow in blue and then finally in the album in color so that's kind of been something that we set out from the start fun little way to be able to sort of drip feed music throughout the year we did it a few years ago with a like a single series we did i think it was once a month we released two singles over like a full year and that compiled into an album at the end of the year i feel like it's just a Bit of a different approach rather than just chucking out an album because it's like everyone's sort of switching from one thing to the other so fast at the moment so it's hard to like put out a whole album before people just get sick of it you know because everything's just so quick any musical influences it could be also it could be for you personally it could be for members of the band it could be kind of everyone kind of in general just any musical influences well like i said earlier the black keys was a big one we were starting off at the moment lots of always been listening to a lot of country music johnny cash bob dylan credence the moment i'm loving the stone roses huge on the stone roses oh and i can't can't not say the beatles the beatles are there at all time and then yeah also like i said bella lip bombs and folk beach trio from from melbourne huge inspirations to us just as like friends and us all being in it together I think that's really cool and just pushes us to sort of want to keep doing this with them and playing with our friends I saw you guys have like you guys have done some collabs and stuff with them um like EPs mm. and songs where you kind of all kind of work together how was that like was it just like a whole bunch of friends like hanging out like how was that for our album launch a few years ago we played with um FBT and they like we'd never met them before as soon as we got up in the green room together and first started chatting it was like instantly became best friends um and that night we were like we should record together we're going to do this and they came down to our farm where we lived down on the coast in victoria um and yeah just recorded and then it was it was very very natural and organic and um and then yeah we started playing a bunch of shows together as well which has been really fun we've done the last two years we've done a christmas show together uh so hopefully we keep doing that sounds like a lot of fun i if you guys are ever in the area, like, or I'm, if I'm in your area, I have to go see you guys. Like, that would be, that would be fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that would be fine. Maybe you can hang out. We'll see. Um, For sure. So, <laughs> I saw you guys are going on a small, like, Australian tour with the Grogans later this year, kind of starting at the end of the month and to, like, kind of the end of April. Like, how is yeah. that, how does that feel? Any preparations that are being made? Any lessons that you've learned from other previous tours? Uh, we did a tour with them last year sort of towards the end of last year similar sort of run around australia and they're best friends of ours as well um we live quite close to them down the coast and they've got a farm down the road as well which is cool they've just last week they were recording in our studio so um and we live where our studio is so we're just like super close with them um so it's just going to be 
very silly, very silly to us, but, but very fun. Hopefully we're going to be in terms of preparation, we're going to be pretty tight coming off the back of this. So any tour must haves, like anything that you need, you think you're either going to bring or something that you're going to have to ask for, like, what are any tour must haves? Like, oh, I can't do it without this. Um, as a man of comfort, I need a neck pillow and an eye mask. <laughs> and when the guys start annoying me, I've got my noise cancelling headphones. Um, and then a big Yeti water bottle. That's definitely, definitely a must have. A good Bluetooth speaker for when there's no speakers around. That's a good one. Honestly, eye masks are 100% essential, especially like if you're in an area where it's hard to fall asleep easily, but you do mm. like, you do want either there's a lot of light or noise or whatever it is, it just kind of like calms you down. 100%. Yeah, absolutely. It's an essential for me too. So I 100% get that. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> what are your favorite artists right now? A band out of Australia who are just, like, popping off at the moment i think they're coming over to america sort of mid this year um royal lotus i don't know if you've heard of them but they're really cool they just went went viral for their um matter on the dance floor cover um, okay nice they're one of our favorite bands at the moment and yet like i said um they're getting to stone roses a lot they've been really cool i've been listening to a lot of bill evans as well a lot of james brown at the moment as well and sam cook sort of delving a bit into the jazz soul world at the moment i love them i love you know frank sinatra sam cook you know dean lewis like all of that like soul crooner jazz like yeah it's just it's such such good music so beautiful so beautiful it's like there's something so romantic about love and about kind of the lyricism and the energy you almost wish like you could go back into that time and like see what it was like you're like oh like what yeah. was you know what were their inspiration like what kind of caused them to write like, for example, one of my favorite songs from that era is Look Be a Lady um, by Frank Sinatra. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'm just like, wow, what a, like, what a vibe, what a, what an energy, you know? And so I just, and I have, I ended up later on listening to bands that also were influenced by uh, Frank Sinatra and the like. And so, again, kind of same thing. It's also kind of cool when you share um people that you your favorite artists and you kind of have the same influences like similar influences that's really really cool it kind of speaks to the transcendence um of time of music and how and the impact like even even all this time after the Beatles like we're really seeing their impact on inspiration on of different artists you know different genres too very well some both <laughs> <laughs> we speaking about the kind of country kind of folk, I guess you could say energy. I know you guys, uh, that's kind of like your genre. It's like, you guys' genre is super unique. I kind of, it's like a, it's like a folk indie alternative, kind of like a blend with like your own things. And so what I'm seeing, like, I mean, obviously like there are uh, lots of music trends in all different types of genres. And it's even hard sometimes now to like put music in boxes. Like, it's just like, kind of just, you, you could just, I guess, categorize it by sound. And like, it's, so it's, you know, people are blending genres left and right. So it's almost hard to see where those lines are divided. And there's a big kind of, I feel like there's one of the big uh, genre trends among other genre trends that are happening right now, besides the whole 80s kind of revival thing, right? Don't they say like every 40 years or so things come back? Yeah. <laughs> so I guess it's time for like 80s revival with like the, you know, pulse synth, you know, synth and, you know, all that yeah. good stuff, um, which is interesting because like my parents generation but anyways besides <laughs> so also one of the genres that's having a comeback right now is like i feel like there's like a country like um or like a folk kind of revival or like a more of an emphasis or it's getting more spotlighted um i think because especially the art emergence of artists like dan and shay who are um incredibly popular incredibly talented musicians they also i feel like they are one of the artists that really helped bring out the kind of like folk country, you know, um, energy, like more guitar, acoustic guitar, acoustic guitar based um, mm. music. So that's like, I don't know, I think it's cool. I think it's like a, it's like a nice trend. It's so, it's so different compared to a lot of things that we see. So it's nice to kind of see something that's a little bit more chill and more relaxing for sure. Yeah, definitely. There's a huge sort of country revivalist scene um, in Melbourne, especially. Um, up in Sydney yeah. as well, uh, well, Australia, I guess I should just say. Um, yeah, so I guess we're sort of part of that in a way. Um, not that we're any different from anyone else, really, but um, 
we've introduced a lot more sort of well synths especially freshen up that sort of country sound and try and make ourselves stand out a little bit we've got a lot of country influences as well so yeah it's definitely a bit of a revival of scene so how how did the band meet two of the guys have been best friends since they were real young and then um we grew a few of us grew up in different towns and met at high school um I was I was talking to Finn, one of the guys, about it the other day. The very first day we both met was at our orientation day in high school. And a bunch of people came up to us, to both of us separately. And they're like, there's this guy over there that's like a spitting image of you. And um, it was Finn. So it's funny to think back now that oh. the very first time I met him, that people were saying that. And now he's like one of my best friends playing in a band together. We, we met through high school. Um, and then I left the high school but then reconnected with them through playing music and yeah. And then we met Jasper just through, I think he knew Finn. I don't know. There's a lot, a lot of different sort of, yeah, <laughs> but we all grew up in, in small towns, like down on the coast in Geelong, pretty small towns. So we kind of, I guess, knew of each other and it was sort of hard not to run into each other when you're playing music down there. There's not, not many people that are playing music down there. So it was kind of, I guess bound to happen at one point or another. Just lucky that, yeah, it turned into the five of us because we all love each other very much. Awesome, man. Yeah. Let's see if you could co-headline with any any artist. Who would you co-headline with? I know the guys would kill me if I didn't say Paul McCartney straight away. So I'll say that. Um, other than that, maybe Royal Lotus. Love Royal Lotus. Like, obsessed with them at the moment. Um, King Gizzard have some really cool crowds. Really, really cool crowds. Rowdy crowds, but it's like they're like their own universe kind of thing at a show there i feel like that'd be really cool to be a part of i'll go with those two i feel like all my all, everything i'm saying is just very very aussie <laughs> i keep just keeping it australian i guess because we're in such a bubble down there very secluded it feels like <laughs> everything's just australian influenced but i'm sure there's a lot of bands that i'm missing out on that the guys are going to grill me for later <laughs> oh man and that's good but i mean it's true i guess if you if that's like what your immediate like circle is then it's like yeah it's kind of like top of mind like it's because it's constant things that are you yeah, see yeah. less often you like of course they kind of slip from your mind yeah yeah exactly if you could have dinner with two people and it's not musicians who would you have dinner with david lynch i don't know if i'm gonna muck up this pronunciation but albert camus the french philosopher those two yeah that's what i'm gonna go with <laughs> okay nice nice i like it i like it so what's a typical like day in the life in the band? Since we are musicians, we are real poor. So we all work jobs at home. Um, most of the guys work full-time jobs, but Jasper and I, I'll, I'll do Jasper and I, um, we both live together out on a farm out down the coast uh, of Victoria. We wake up early. We wake up at 6.30 every morning. We go for a swim down at the beach. In winter, it is crazy but it's a nice way to wake up we do that go get a coffee and then go to work all day and then when we get back we try and record as much as we can um since our studio is like a part of our house in in an old apple cool room um so we usually try and just get into the studio as much as possible we've got a big deck out on the farm so we usually have a big cook up together people that live at home and if it's sunny a nice big cook up together out on the watching the sunset this sounds so romanticized like we were saying it's it's not 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 all it sounds out to be but yeah <laughs> <laughs> that sounds amazing i just want to spend all the time over there um so i live in such a big bustling city that it's i mean miami i feel like everybody knows miami like almost everybody's like oh my gosh like wow a beach you must go to the beach all the time like i i don't they're like it's just <laughs> silly things like that and it's just people are just you know it's a lot of it's crazy how i guess you could say the influence like personal influences um even artistic influences i'm a photographer so that's you know something else yeah. but i am lucky enough that i guess it kind of relates to how you guys live like you know a little bit off the beaten path like not really in a big big city it's like for me it's a little bit more of a smaller scale but like the area which i live is like pretty like off beaten path like a lot of people from the city don't even know that this like little secluded corner exists by the water. So I have similar routines. I like, I'll wake up and have a coffee and look at the water, like the ocean's right there. 
Um, mm -hmm. And so I see dolphins, I see, you know, fish and sharks and all that good stuff. So oh, things are, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, other things, lots of birds, but I feel like it's almost like a similar vibe, um, which is cool, yeah. which is cool. Yeah, for sure. It's just, there's just something so relaxing about waking up, even if you're in somewhere that's a little bit more populated, something that's like, you can still be calm and like kind of ease your way into, instead of being like rush with a million things. Yeah, definitely. I think it's a big thing, especially like being a part of the band and having to go and, you know, do shows all the time. And we're kind of always uh, on emails and on messenger replying to things. And, you know, it's very, very busy kind of time for us, I guess. Um, and, you know, if you go out to a bar or something and play a show, there's so many people around. So it's definitely very nice living down the coast and being able to sort of, I guess, not just sound all hippie, but getting into nature or whatever. Uh, and just relaxing yourself and, yeah, calming down. It's definitely a nice way to start the day before you get into all the busyness of everything and the quickness of the modern world. <laughs> if you could describe the band in three words, what would you use? Fun, silly. And I think in terms of maybe songwriting, I'll go very introspective. Today you guys are just like kind of hanging out. Are you guys playing today or not yet? No, our first show is on Friday at Hotel Vegas. Um, somewhere, I think it's East Austin somewhere. Um, I think we're just going to hang out today. Maybe, um, I don't know, try some more food spots. Um Maybe do some more vintage shopping, even though I've spent way too much money on that already. Um, yeah, try and recover the sore buttocks from the horse riding. <laughs> um, and then probably, probably go head out to some bars tonight, have a drink, try and meet some locals, have a good time. Yeah, that's about it. Sounds, sounds amazing. It sounds amazing. I love vintage shopping too. It's like super fun. There's only yeah. about one, there's like one really dedicated like vintage store near me. I wish there were more, but also it's like a dangerous thing. Cause it's like, you just want to go and spend all your money there on all the things. It's not good. Vintage. Not good for the bank account. It's not, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's dangerous. It's dangerous. And I hope you guys get to um, try all the Austin barbecue, like all the good, good, you know. Good yeah. Texas yeah. We've barbecue. got a few recommendations. So we'll, we'll definitely be checking out some more. Awesome. Well, that pretty much kind of wraps up our time. Um, thank you Beautiful. so much for hopping on this with me. And thank you. really quick, yeah, yeah. Um, so two more things. One, if you could say anything to the, like, what's your message right now to the fans? Like, if you could say anything to them, what would you say? Listen to our new AP. <laughs> um, and I would also say, free Palestine, ceasefire now.